Doctors at University Hospital in North Carolina, Duke Hospital, announcing a first-of-its-kind pediatric heart procedure. The breakthrough could forever change how surgeons handle heart problems in babies. And Sloan Glass is here now with details. Incredible story. Incredible, absolutely. And you can just see the little baby behind me and Ruta Bay. That infant spent seven months in the hospital post-surgery. His medical team said it took that long to make sure his recovery was going as planned. And now the first patient to receive a combination heart transplant with a twist to fight infection is home where he recently celebrated his first birthday. I was about 20 weeks pregnant with him when we found out about his uh, heart defects. And so we knew he was going to need a heart surgery. Caitlin Cinnamon of Asheboro, North Carolina, learned a little more than halfway through her pregnancy that the child she was carrying would need help to survive outside the womb. But she didn't know at the time that the baby, a son she and husband Brandon named Easton, would become the first person in the world to receive what's called a thymus heart transplant. The thymus is a gland that sits atop the heart. The thymus is really important for, we call it the schoolhouse for your T-cells. Meaning, according to Easton surgeon Dr. Joseph Turek, that all of the immune fighting cells from different parts of the body localize in the thymus and the gland helps cells grow so your body can fight infections. We thought if we did a thymus and heart transplant on Easton, there's a potential that taking that from the same donor would allow that transplanted heart to be recognized as self. Turek says Easton was born with a single ventricle heart disease and a valve leak that was a problem as well. The medical team first tried to fix the problems with Easton's heart, but said it became clear he was going to need a heart transplant and thymus procedure too, because he wasn't able to produce T cells to fight off infections. So the Duke University doctors decided on the thymus heart transplant from the same donor. We had the expertise to do both. We were able to, to get approval through the FDA to do such. Doctors say Easton is still taking medication to help keep his body from rejecting his new heart. But as his tolerance grows, they'll be able to withdraw all his immunosuppressant meds, and his body will still recognize his heart. And baby Easton and his parents, Caitlin and Brandon Cinnamon, are joining us now live. And he is so adorable. Uh, thanks for being with us. So how is he doing? He's doing really well, um, you know, better than we could ever imagine yeah. after everything he went through. And this is everything you've been through, too. I mean, this is so terrifying for a parent. What was this like trying to make the decision for him to undergo a heart transplant? And he's so little. Um, I think what was hardest for us was just knowing if it was the best decision or not. But we made every decision with what was best at that time. Um, you know, the best thing for us was to see that he was fighting the BB and that that's what we wanted to make happen. Yeah, and he's talking for the interview also, uh, so adorable. And you have a four-year-old daughter at home too, I understand. What has that been like for, for the whole family? I mean, what did you tell her? Um, so when we decided to list him for transplant, we actually told her that we were waiting on a little angel to bring him a heart. Wow. Uh, we knew we never were going to lie to her, so she knew that he was only going to come home once he received a new heart. And, you know, once we brought him home, we were able to surprise her, and she couldn't be happier to have him here. Oh. Um, and, and I understand you just celebrated his first birthday. What was that like? I mean, the first birthday is special anyway, but uh, how did you celebrate this milestone? It was, it was a big celebration, especially because seven months ago, we would never expect to be celebrating his first birthday. And so we had lots of family and even some staff that we became really close to at the hospital that came to help celebrate you know, his new gift of life to be here. So many people rooting for him. And, and this has the potential to change the future of, of organ transplants for all patients, right? That must be such a good feeling to know that you're potentially saving so many other families also. Yes, and I think that was the biggest decision between both of us was that making this decision for him not only helped save him, but helped save, you know, thousands of other people as well. So what's a typical day for you now? Um, we honestly do a lot of normal toddler things every day. We do have therapies that come out a couple days a week to help with him just because he did lay in a bed for so long. Um, 
but we get up and we play and he likes to watch Sesame Street and play with his sister when she gets home from daycare. Oh, and I, it must make you just look at the world in a different way. It does. <laughs> you know, it's something we're really thankful to have him here for. Uh, well, we're so uh, happy to be able to tell this story and that we're seeing the images, I think, is this him coming out of the hospital? This is so special and so adorable. And there are so many people all around the country who have seen this story and, and it gives people so much hope. Yes, and that was our biggest thing for everything that we've gone through with Easton is, you know, we want to let all the families who are going through similar situations know that there is hope to get through it. All right, well, th thank you to both of you. Thank you to Easton for this interview. He's been very vocal. It was so nice to see him. Uh, we really appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to click on the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.